Before I introduce the first speaker, I'm going to take a minute and talk about the future of GIS. And in a moment at the end, I'll talk to you about how to make it real. And I didn't introduce what I do. I'm part of the organization at Esri that supports all of our users in taking business problems and helping understand how Esri technology can help solve those problems. So we run the services part of Esri, and I'm one of the luckiest people here because I get to see cool GIS technology at play across all markets, across all industries. So what I'm going to do is talk to you about how the future of GIS is here now. And I'm going to share with you a few stories of innovation by innovators or spatial transformers, as we heard this morning. And if you're still kind of coming out of that lunchtime fog, I want to warn you, I'm going to tell you eight stories in eight minutes, so pay attention or it'll be over. Or maybe if you want to be in that fog, you only have a minute or two before you have to listen to the next speaker. So let me start by talking about innovation in the supply chain. But I need to introduce you to Driscoll's. If you don't know who Driscoll's is, if you've had any berries in California, or if you eat any berries this week in San Diego, you're probably tasting some of the best berries on the planet, and that's from Driscoll's. And they are a family-owned business that's been around for 100 years, and they're always completely focused on the best berries possible in all the markets in the West. Now, they've been talking about a delight platform. They talk about IT as a way to enable consumers to get the best berries possible. So the service of that platform is ensuring that customer delight. And they've been looking very closely at supply chain at an extremely micro level. So how do you understand when you have hundreds of farming, farmers, which are large co-ops that each have hundreds of fields, how do you understand where every berry has come from? How do you understand if a particularly good berry was brought to market, what the recipe was back at that field that could be applied to treat it to other fields? How do you know when a berry's quality is compromised because it's been in delivery for too long? Well, they're applying GIS to this problem, and they're applying it with their partner, Sambrilo, who makes those packages that they call clamshells. And you can see a picture on the slide. And they figured out how to use GIS to take every part of that supply chain forward, whether they're measuring field plots and tracking where every strawberry or blackberry was picked, tracking the trucks to the cooling centers and the distribution centers, using technology like Survey123 to do quality assurance on every package as it moves through, and then tracking it through the life cycle. They are able now to do farm to table, berry freshness at a level, at a speed, and at a quality that they could never achieve before. We're seeing innovation in supply chain, not just in the micro level of farm to table, but across global organizations. And many of you are dealing with these in different elements. And what we're seeing is an explosion of technology use to solve really critical supply chain problems. And you know that a disruption to supply chain of an hour can often cost a million dollars of output. So critical information. And this is where we start to get into rapid decision making, awareness, and alternative choices in real time. In fact, you can think of this as really the dawning of predictive analytics at scale. And supply chain is something that, as many of you look at, is probably nowhere more evident than a company like General Motors. So GM is one of the organizations that's really looking at this deeply. And their innovations are allowing them to have predictive analytics and insights across their employer's entire supply chain, understanding the risks and impact of a single part being down and not getting to a manufacturing facility. We're also seeing significant innovation in banking and uh, investment and real estate. And Regions Bank, who will speak later this afternoon, is one of those great examples. Now, they, if you don't know them, are a leading banking organization in the Southeast United States with great credentials, top rankings, number one customer satisfaction in 2016. And their whole slogan is about making life better. But inside Regions, Grant, who's speaking later, and his team have been making business run better. And what's innovative about what Regions is doing is consistent with what you've seen all morning. And that is that they're taking this platform, this IT GIS platform, and applying it to provide business value at scale across many different lines of business. And Grant will get into more deep examples, but I wanted you to understand the breadth of what they're doing for everything from catastrophic events to mortgage lending, retail distribution, executive views, all sharing different focused information products and applications from a same corporate asset. Extremely fast time to value, extremely flexible. Wawa is also doing something similar. If you don't know Wawa, and I'm from the West, the first time I heard about them, I said, who's, who's Wawa? They're prolific across the East Coast. 
and their convenience store with over 700 branches, 22,000 employees, and they're growing very rapidly in select markets. In fact, they need to be hyper-focused on some of those markets like Florida and drive expansion, which requires all parts of the business to work in unison, doing their part of the job, but doing it in coordination with others. So the Wawa team has been building really progressive capabilities through different apps, information products, and capabilities that allow all of those teams to work in unison, whether it's enterprise integration, distribution, merchandise expansion, marketing and sales, or real estate asset management. And it's allowed them to be hyper-focused on markets like Florida to figure out how they get the strategic advantage as they work as one unit. The same basic pattern as regions, one IT platform, one GIS platform that is solving many problems for many users. We're also seeing significant innovation in the analytics space around big data. If you were here last year, you heard Guy Carpenter speak in the plenary. They're a global reinsurance leader with 52,000 employees. Their job is to insure the insurance companies. So risk is every day front and center for them. They have to understand how to optimize and balance portfolios, how to spread risk for catastrophic events. And they need powerful GIS analytics to do this. For me, what's inspiring about Guy Carpenter is their ability to take really large amounts of data and boil those down into actionable information for everyday analysts who are not PhDs in GIS. And you, if you saw last year and they continue to innovate, they're able to quickly analyze and show results in focused application advantage point to give that power of information from GIS into the hands of analysts who are making daily decisions on portfolios. Another area that we're seeing tremendous explosion, and we heard about it this morning, is in the urban growth areas. The combination of 3D and analytics with compelling visuals. And the city of San Francisco is doing some things similar to what we heard about in a couple cases in London this morning. So they're looking at transportation corridors, growth and investment, and understanding what the different scenarios mean for infrastructure development, for land use zoning changes, and these apply certainly to the business community when you flip this upside down to market opportunity and market expansion. What speaks to me about their innovation is not just the analytics, but the compelling visuals that allow people to understand immediately. And I was blown away this morning by seeing some of those from the presenters. They're really getting to the heart of deep analytics, simple visuals, that equals understanding and decisions. Another area of innovation that we'll continue to hear about and we saw this morning is indoor GIS and the world of IoT. I think we're going to hear from Acuity and GIS Inc. in Atlanta airports later. They're going to get into it. Tomorrow, you'll be hearing from Dubai Design District as part of the Smart Dubai presentation. Dubai Design District is building one of the smartest, happiest work, life, play areas. It's a city within the city, and they're using GIS completely connected to IoT to manage, build, plan, and allow people to work inside the built environment. We're also seeing a lot of innovation in simple applications that allow every employee to be more productive. We all work in a world where we can find a Starbucks on our phone or walk through San Diego to the convention center, but when you get inside, do you know the quickest way to get somewhere? Do you know how to report a box light or a projector not working in a conference room? It's those simple applications of GIS to the workplace that are saving people a lot of money, and I think you're gonna see explosive growth in this market as well. I wanna close on an example that you might at first say doesn't really apply to the business community. Uh, but as you know, Esri supports all different industries, and some of these, these uh, users are really incredible in the difference that they're making. So the Geneva International Center for Humanitarian Demining's whole purpose in life is to work across the mine action community and coordinate the global response for mine removal, obviously of great importance and great peril if this isn't done carefully. By using GIS and a new platform and SaaS way, they're able to coordinate and understand complex global operations with dozens and dozens of local actors, each working in their area for mine removal. GICHD can now provide unparalleled awareness and coordination between those organizations and allow each of them to focus on the really critical and intense activities that they have on the ground. If you Translate that to business, global coordination, precision operations. I think that's probably something all of you can identify with, whether you're removing a mine or removing a virtual mine from your business. It's really, really critical. It's also nice to know that our community of GIS practitioners is doing things like this on the planet. Now, we hope that this whole conference is inspiring for you. In fact, 
There's a lot of sessions that always leave me overwhelmed with the amazing things that you can do. And I wanna close this session here with just a couple slides, three or four, that really help talk about how do you actually make this real? Because you're gonna hear more stories this afternoon. You're gonna go hopefully to the plenary tomorrow. It's an amazing experience and you see these highly polished results of people who have put their career life work into these outcomes, solving real problems and making a difference. And then many of you or your colleagues will be in technical sessions all week. And then you get back home next week. Or maybe if you're lucky, you get a vacation for a few days and then you're back to work. So what now? There's a lot to think about. All right, you've got it all figured out, right? So a lot of technology and a lot of business problems. So we've been thinking a lot about what are the universal aspects of actually making this happen? How do people get to these successful outcomes? And frankly, I heard about it in all the presenters today. I heard elements of everything here. So I'm gonna boil down for you just something very simple, and I hope it's helpful for you as you go back. So we really see setting conditions and taking the right approach as the two keys to getting things done and making a difference whether you're a mature GIS organization trying to figure out where to go next or whether you're a new organization figuring out how to take advantage of the power of this technology. So I talked earlier, we talked about people matter, right? It starts with people, it ends with people. And there's some key roles that we see playing out over and over again. You need executive sponsorship, you need a champion who is going to lead the effort every day, and then you need technical leadership, whether that's one person or a team, usually evolving their skills as you go. And in many situations, if one of these roles is missing, you're in trouble. So watch for that. Make sure you've got all of these in place. And then there's a mindset. And it was super clear with all the presenters today so far. Business outcomes are the critical first step. Start with the end in mind and have a big vision, but also get things done quickly. Find success criteria that you can meet right away to show the value of what you're doing. And then from there, you can expand. And that requires being okay with uncertainty, being adaptable, and thinking about how to use the technology out of the box so you can configure and go. And these elements together, people and mindset, create the conditions to move forward. So then if you abstract the way that you actually take something from strategy to implementation, we've tried to look across what all of you are doing and just come down to four, four or five key steps that lay it out. And you might look at this and say, this is really generic, Brian, like, of course, but that's the point. This should be something that you can remember and think about. So number one, you need a location strategy. Everybody who spoke today had a big vision in mind with outcomes. Sometimes I think about it as your mountain. You're gonna climb Mount Everest, you can see that mountain, you know where the top is, you know what success looks like. Number two, there's a sense of planning and assessment. What's your human capital in the organization? Do you have the expertise? What's your current IT infrastructure? And do you have a sense of what you're gonna do first and what you're gonna do later? Then we often move out, we, sometimes at Esri, we talk about initial operating capability. That's just a jargon for a quick win. Get something done that has real business value with real results. Not just a prototype, but an operating capability to solve a problem. And from there, it gets a lot easier to start expanding. And you saw in many of these examples, people who have put out applications for many different business units and many different users that are building on that success. And finally, you can never lose sight of your strategy. So while you may have an annual time to step back and say, where are you, where are you going, what's the big picture, are we still climbing Mount Everest? It's useful to be doing this all the time. So I hope that just thinking about these five steps and some of those conditions will at least give you a starting point or a place to move forward when you get back from the conference.